Our first set of topics is covering number systems and operations on, the, on the numerical values. You can see that we have links to video, uh, reading chapter assignments, uh, handouts that we're going to cover in this section, and we also have first laboratory exercise and of our first homework assignment. So there's quite a few things to go over. The books in our course are free. Uh, we have lecture notes, uh, which is uh, available in PDF format. We have a free book from Paul Carter, and we have a couple of uh, Intel manuals uh, to use uh, in our section of the course where we're going to start using assembly programming. Just be aware that those uh, PDF files, all of them have convenient uh, navigation uh, bookmarks that you should use to quickly jump to specific topics. The handouts are available in two forms. First is the handout of the entire lecture and there's also a presentation format broken down to individual slides. So we're going to speak about concepts uh, including numerical systems, digital logic, using bits and gates to construct circuits capable of logical and arithmetic operations and computer hardware. And we're going to overview computer organization and also look at machine language. Specifically, we're going to be using Intel x86 or 32-bit version of Intel architecture to uh, uh, write the code of various assembly programs. So this is our first presentation, Introduction to Computer Systems. And I mentioned machine language, uh, which is consistent of zeros and ones and codes that hardware can understand directly when executing our programs. So while programming in high-level programming languages, we still need to understand this level because it allows us to understand hardware, computer memory, and uh, of course, it allows us to have deeper understanding of the structure of our programs and how exactly CPU executes the programs that we write in other programming languages. So these are some of the topics and concepts that I was talking about a little bit earlier. But uh, beyond machine language, we're also going to see the connection or interaction between high-level programming languages such as C and C++ with respect to making function calls, um, mechanisms of recursion, uh, using stack for passing parameters, using calling conventions or covering calling conventions that exist to uh, execute function calls, and also uh, understand stack frames and uh, other techniques that exist in C and C++, such as pointers, the idea of data structures, and linked lists. So we begin talking about zeros and ones, which physically exist in hardware in form of wires or connections between different parts. And uh, 0 and 1 is recognized by its high or low voltage level. So that later on, when we have multiple wires, we can recognize combinations of zeros and 1s and construct sequences of them, such as this, for example. And uh, such sequences would correspond to certain encodings of numbers. So, for example, uh, using uh, straightforward encoding of zeros and ones, we would recognize this binary number as it corresponds to decimal number 35. All processing is happening inside a processing unit, central processing unit, which manipulates those sequences of zeros and ones, doing uh, various operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and also using uh, peripheral devices to make input and output uh, in and out of CPU and computer memory. A computer system would be 
uh, made of CPU, memory, peripheral devices, and software. Software has to be loaded into computer memory in order to be able to execute. The uh, history of universal computational device uh, goes to uh, goes back to 1937, where Alan Turing, British mathematician and researcher, uh, invented uh, or made an invention of a Turing machine, and it encapsulates closed boxes of operations and um, a number of inputs which can be supplied that would produce a corresponding result. So, for example, Turing machine for addition would make arithmetic addition, uh, multiplication, and other uh, operations can also be supplied by other machines. So Turing provided the first description. However, computers were built in 1946. So the idea is that any computation can be performed by some Turing machine, uh, commonly referred to as a universal Turing machine. So you can see that there is a list of inputs and a list of operations. And if constructed with uh, an idea that these operations should be uh, uh, performed a certain sequence, uh, we should get the correct result of inputs multiplied, added, and so forth. The two fundamental ideas of Turing were that uh, first it provided the description what computers do as we know them and also uh, gave way to a device which is programmable. Of course we want our computers to not just be wired to um, execute a certain sequence of steps multiplications, additions, and so forth, but rather we would like to make them programmable. So the next interesting aspect conceptually in what form uh, humans are going to communicate with computers and perhaps it would be possible to consider an input uh, that would recognize natural language as a description of a problem and steps to execute. However, there's lots of ambiguity in natural languages and they're also context specific. So the bottom line is that computers require specific instructions, very precise, uh, very direct instructions of what steps to execute. Another very important idea is an algorithm which is a step-by-step -step procedure that is guaranteed to terminate. Each step is precisely defined and stated, so you're seeing the connection to programmable device where we need to specify, find a way uh, to specify a set of steps to be able to uh, in execute a certain algorithm. And uh, since procedure will terminate, we can uh, generally refer to algorithms as finite uh, algorithms. To solve a particular problem, of course, we want a combination of algorithms such as uh, sorting, reversing, and using mathematical operations on numbers. Programming languages allow us to specify sequence of instructions. Uh, lots of different programming languages uh, are very popular today, of course, uh, to name a few, C, C++, Java, uh, Python, uh, HTML, and so forth. So high-level languages are uh, machine-independent. They uh, would uh, be understood by compilers running on different platforms, and therefore these programming languages, their popularity is because they could be, they are uh, portable. They can be moved from one platform to another. Uh, source code of the same program would run, would be compiled just fine on different platforms. <clears throat> Low-level programming languages are tied to the computer on which programs will execute. And for each system, there is one such low-level language, which is called the assembly language. So I'm running here on Intel system. And we're in the second part of our course, we're going to uh, look at uh, examples of programs uh, in assembly language 
using 32-bit version of assembly for Intel platform x86. Instruction set architecture is a combination of all instructions that can be carried out by the CPU. So there's on, on modern CPUs, there are thousands of instructions that are available. And instructions have formats that normally provide operation codes and the operands to, uh, to, to use. For instance, if you're adding two numbers, you have to specify what the two numbers are and what is the code of operation in our cases, like adding. <clears throat> so when we mention instructions in our course, uh, it could be an assembly instruction or it could be a disassembly instruction that uh, we took out of an image of executable program. Uh, it could be some sort of encoding that we then recognize as an instruction. And it could also be a microcode that implements the corresponding operation in the CPU itself. So these are uh, all different levels at which instruction are uh, making sense. So operands describe the data, the actual values manipulated by the instructions. The data itself, the operands, can have different sizes, can be of different types, right? For instance, we can have integer numbers, characters, and floating point uh, numbers. So the data needs to be located uh, in computer memory before uh, any kind of operation can take place. So therefore, we need to understand addressing modes, which would be able to specify us uh, what is the location of the data. <clears throat> 